we as a species have been greatly influenced by the patterns of, of cold and ice that we have experienced in the past. In fact, our very genus, Homo, emerged just over two million years ago, shortly after the beginning of the current ice age uh, in which we now find ourselves. So the entire history of humanity has actually been shaped by changing patterns of glacial advances and retreats. The Neanderthals, who lived in Europe and Asia between around 400,000 years ago to about 40,000 years ago, uh, were actually well adapted to living in a cold environment. Although uh, we now understand with more current research uh, and different techniques for exploring the archaeological record that their adaptations were far more sophisticated than once thought. Uh, we initially thought that Neanderthals were primarily adapted to the cold in terms of their body shape. So they were squats, they had relatively short limbs uh, in, in proportion to the rest of their body, very broad noses, all features that would help them to survive in a cold environment by allowing them to retain their body warmth to a greater degree. We now think that it's more likely that these features developed to allow them to hunt more effectively in the slightly warmer forested environments uh, further south of, of the actual glaciers themselves. But those body features essentially were pre-adaptations that did allow them to work and operate more effectively in the cold environments. Uh, we now know, however, that in addition to these biological features, uh, Neanderthals were actually quite sophisticated culturally. They were able to create simple clothing. In addition to their biological predispositions, they were, in a sense, able to conquer the cold environment at the, the edge of the glaciers. Canada actually has several important archaeological sites that document the first movement of people across the Beringia Land Bridge, which once connected Asia and North America. Uh, one of these sites is the Wally's Beach site, which is in southern Alberta on the St. Mary Reservoir. Found in the late 1990s, this site has yielded direct evidence of the presence of, of human populations on, around the edge of the glaciers at the very end uh, of the last glacial cycle. This includes uh, numerous artifacts of hunting uh, in association with the remains of many large game species, both uh, extinct animals like the woolly mammoth, as well as animals that are still present today like the caribou. The artifacts on display in Planet Ice from Nunavut illustrate how different past societies have adapted to their Arctic environment. For the Dorset, uh, an archaeological culture known to the modern Inuit as the Tunit, and who lived around 2,800 to 800 years ago, adaptation really focused on learning how to hunt on the pack ice. The Tunit lived during a particularly cold phase uh, of the environment, and so they specialized in developing the tools and the hunting strategies necessary for capturing marine mammals from land fast ice. When the environment eventually began to shift towards warmer conditions, so beginning around uh, AD 1000, a new group of people moved in, the Thule Inuit, who are the ancestors of the modern Inuit. And they actually adapted to these conditions of cold winters, but slightly warmer springs and summers by learning how to hunt not only on the ice, but also in the open water, uh, and also to take advantage of terrestrial resources uh, in the warmer conditions. Peoples in the Arctic also developed very sophisticated sewing technologies that allowed them to create garments that were not only incredibly warm, but were also waterproof. <laughs>